guys, today we are going to be bringing back a Juvia's Place palette and I want to work with the Saharan. And the reason for that is that while I was going through my eyeshadow palette declutter and I was talking through all of my palettes, I was kind of stumped on this one and I was like, I don't know why I don't use this more, it just doesn't really inspire me, I don't know what I'm meant to do with this palette, so that's what I want to try to figure out. I want to try to figure out what does this palette want me to do with it. So I think what I want to do is I want to first swatch this palette, but I'm going to swatch it in a different order than I usually would. So I'm first going to swatch all of the mattes. So let me just do that real quick. So we only have four mattes in here and I want to just kind of put them all next to each other because this is what's going to determine what colors that we have in our crease if we are the kind of people who like to only have mattes in the crease, which I am. And I did get a little bit of black on this bottom shade right here. I'm so sorry about that. I'll just try to make that a little bit better. So without going any further, let's just kind of look at this now. So the way that I see this is that all of these shadows go pretty nicely together. You can really build all four on top of each other if you really wanted to. Uh, so, so far, I mean, they're pretty easy to work with, but on the other hand, it's also quite limiting because you are going to end up with either an orange crease or a red crease, or you could also do only a black crease. I know a lot of people don't like doing that. You can use this as transition and then kind of build it up with the black, which would make it a lot more of a neutral look than a warm tone look that you would get with these two. You could also, of course, only do the orange and maybe the brown if you wanted to go that route, but for the most part, you are going to be stuck with a very warm tone crease and then probably a deep outer corner with the black. So. That is mostly what this palette is like, you know, meant to do, I guess. So let me just swatch all of the shimmers now as well. And I'm going to swatch these underneath the mattes so that all of the shimmers are together because it's just a lot easier to see what exactly is going on in a palette if you separate the mattes from the shimmers. And I am, of course, just swatching it like this way because it just makes the most sense, you know? So we're not gonna worry too much about the names of all of the shadows. I just kinda wanna get them all on my arm so we can see the complete color story here. Okay, so right off the bat, what I am noticing here is that there are some cool tone shimmers that you probably wouldn't think to put with the warm tone mattes, especially this pink down here. Because a lot of times pink doesn't really go that well with orange, especially a cool tone pink. Uh, same with this one, which is kind of like an icy blue. And then you also have this one up here, which is more of a kind of greeny gold. So the color story doesn't really like make sense, if you know what I mean. Yes, there are some shadows that go really nicely together, but if I were to like break down these and think about which kind of colors I would want to have in my crease with that shimmer on the lid, it probably wouldn't be the mattes that are in this palette. So I think that's why maybe why I'm a little bit stumped on this, but I can also see so many different looks that I could do with this palette. But I don't think I would be the kind of person who would put, you know, a lot of these in the crease at the same time. I would probably use one or two at most. And I could also see doing a beautiful black smoky eye with this all over the lid and in the crease top with this beautiful shimmer right here and then putting any of these shimmers in the inner corner that would be beautiful and also this kind of red shimmer is so pretty I don't think I've ever really like taken a second look at that shimmer so maybe I want to use that today but I also don't really feel like that goes with my hair that well so there's that so what do I want to do do I want to go with like a very black smoky eye I feel like a lot of people aren't gonna want to do that so maybe I should stick to some more of the warmer shades without making it like too intense. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna start by taking the orange shadow, which is called Jamila, and I'm going to start by putting that into my crease. But first I need to prime, and I'm gonna prime with my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. So like I said, I'm gonna go in with the orange in my transition. If you wanted to, you could absolutely go in with Katsina and use that as your transition shade to the orange, but I don't really like using transition shades personally. I like to just go in with the color and then work on blending the color out because I feel like if I go in with a brown before I go in with a color, it just kind of mutes down the color and that's not what I want. Like if I want to use an orange, I want it to be orange. I don't want it to turn into like an orange brown. So that is why I never personally use transition shades. But if you're not the kind of person who likes very vibrant colors, doing it that way is probably going to be a good way to kind of tone the color down a bit. So. I am just going to go straight in with this orange and I'm going to place that all over my crease. 
and I am packing this on quite heavily because I do like my shadows to be very pigmented. And once I have the color down the way that I want it, I'm going to go in and start blending here. And the brush that I'm using is my Luxie 231, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is a small taper blending brush, and this blush... <laughs> blush? Why do I always say blush when I mean brush? Does anyone else do that? I feel like the two words are just like so similar that I always mess up. But this is the Luxie 231 small taper blending brush. That is such a hard one to say all at once, but that's what that brush is. And I really like this for starting off a look with, especially if I'm going to go in with just a transition shade. Or just one shade in the crease, I should say. And as with every other Juvia's Place palette, this is blending up beautifully. Alright, so now that I have this down, I could probably go in two directions. I could go in and deepen this up with the black, or I could also go in with the red and just make it a little bit more dimensional without add adding too much depth. So those are pretty much the two directions that I could go in now. I could also not deepen this up with anything and just leave it as is, which would be totally fine too. But I think I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pull the shadow down to my lower lash line as well before I do anything else, and then I'm gonna go in and deepen it up with a black because I love me a good black eyeshadow. I know a lot of people don't, but if I have a chance to use a black and I have a black in a palette, you better believe that I'm gonna be using that black. So let me just pull this down to my lower lash line first, and then we're gonna go in and have some fun with the black. So I first packed this on with a bit of a packing brush and now I'm going to go in with more shadow and I'm going to work on blending this out and I like when I'm using black to have this very blown out because that way I have more shadow to blend the black into and make it look a bit less muddy so I'm going to wing this out quite a bit as well which of course is optional not something you really have to do but like I said I find that when I'm going to go in with a black I like to have a lot of shadow down so that it makes it easier to blend out. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a bit of a smaller fluffy brush and I'm going to use my Morphe M506 and I'm going to dip into Chat, which is the black shadow. And I'm first just going to pack that on the outer corner pretty heavily on about the outer third or so of my eyelid as well. And then once I have this placed down, I'm going to start going in with a bit more, but not much. I'm going to tap off my brush and then just start blending this using small circular motions. And I'm also going to pull this in a little bit through my crease here just to darken this up, but I don't want this to get out of hand, so keep it very precise because that way you're not going to end up with too much black everywhere and then kind of regret your whole life decision. So, you know, just take it slow when you're working with black. It's definitely my best advice. And if you don't like to go in with as much as I did at first, that is totally fine too. And you could definitely go in with way less than what I did. So I'm also going to sort of wing this out a bit as well, just kind of following that orange that I put down first. And also just pulling down to my lower lash line a little bit in the outer corner here. And this black is so easy to work with and it just blends up beautifully. I really don't know how Juice Place does it. Like, I did not spend a lot of time blending out the shadow and this looks so good. So I'm gonna do the same on the other eye and then we're gonna figure out what else we wanna do on the lid here because now we have so many options that we can go in with. I am also gonna take a bit more of that orange, still working on the same brush, and just kind of running that over where the orange and the black blends, just to make sure the blend everywhere is looking nice and also just to bring back a bit more of that orange. Okay, let's move on. So let's just take a look at these swatches again now so we kind of see what options we have. So for me, when I first look at my crease now, what I originally want to go in with is something that is warm tone because I feel like if I were to go in with, say, this kind of light bluey, icy shimmer, it's just going to look a little bit out of place. So I feel like this would be more used as a inner corner highlight when you're using maybe the red. I feel like those would look really nice together. Like I wouldn't put this together with an orange. I don't know why for me that's just like a weird combination. So when I'm looking at this now, I'm kind of gravitating more towards this one right here, which is kind of like a cool tone gold in a way because it's got a bit of a green undertone. And I'm also gravitating towards this shadow right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first take this one and I'm gonna put that in like about the middle of my eye or so, meeting it up with the black because that is going to be a very nice transition into the black. 
So I'm first going to go in with this, which is called Kia. So this one right here. And I'm going to take that on a bit of a kind of flat packing brush. And I'm not going to spray this. I'm just going to put that right in the middle of my eye here. And this is going to help it blend into that black matte that we have on the outer corner. And it's also going to blend really easily into the crease. I don't feel like doing a cut crease today because cut creases are overrated. I feel like so many people do them all the time and I'm just kind of sick of doing them. So we're just gonna, you know, not do a cut crease today because you don't always have to do a cut crease. And I honestly find that when you have hooded eyes, cut creases sometimes end up looking a little bit just not perfect, if that makes any sense. I don't even know how else to really explain it because a lot of the time when you're doing cut creases on hooded eyes, they need to be perfect in order to look like they belong on your eyes. So a lot of the time I tend to just kind of not do cut creases and just play it safe because when you're doing eye looks that are a bit more less or <laughs> that are a bit less structured, it just kind of blends into your eye a little bit better. And if you make a mistake, it's not as apparent. The shadow is so beautiful though. I can't believe I've never used this. So as you can see, this blends beautifully into the black that I put down. It also blends really nicely into the crease here. And if you wanted this to be more intense, I would definitely go in now and put another layer on top of this that you spray. But I like to put down the first layer first, just so I can kind of blend it into the outer corner a little bit better sometimes. So what do I want to do next? I still kind of want to use that goldish shade. This one right here, I could also go in with probably the bronze shade. I don't really feel like this pink shimmer belongs in this palette. I could see using it with the red, but not with the orange, like I said. That's just personal preference. So like, don't you have certain colors that you just don't like the thought of putting together? Because I know I do. I actually have a lot of colors that I don't like putting together. And for me, some of them are gold and pink. I don't like gold and pink together. So when I look at this, I'm like, pink, gold, gold, and I'm like, I don't really like that, so maybe that's another reason why I don't like this palette so much, because there are a lot of shades in here that I don't personally like to be touching. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this one right here, which is called Wodo Bay. I always mess up that name. I really, I'm, I'm just going to stop trying because I don't know how to pronounce that. And I'm going to take this on a smaller brush, and I am going to spray it this time. And I'm basically just going to put that on the rest of my lid, meeting it up with that. Wow, that is quite intense. <laughs> I'm gonna meet that up with the preview shade that I just put down and just blend these two in together. I cannot believe how intense that shadow is. This is why I love Juvia's Place so much. And I'm just fading this into the other shadow that I put down. I'm also creating a bit of like a diagonal line here when they meet. I just kind of like the look of that. I'm also going to take this same shadow and just kind of wrap this around in my inner corner because I love doing that. And I'm just going to meet that up with the shadow that I have on the lower lash line. I'm not going to bring this very far in, but I just want this to gently be wrapped around. So just to finish this off, I'm going to go back in with Kia, which was the shadow that we put in the middle of the lid here. And I'm going to spray this this time because I do want to really intensify the shadow. And I also want to pull this yellow in a little bit more because I felt like that shadow went so far. But I kind of just want to bring it back a little bit. And I also want this to be a little bit more intense, just right in the middle of my eye here. So this is all I'm going to do for eyeshadow. Now for my waterline, I'm going to use a very dark green. And this is a new one that I got from Colourpop. It's called Fastlane. So I'm going to pop this in my waterline. Then I'm going to do some winged liner and mascara. And I will be right back and we can talk a little bit more. Put on some lipsticks. Yada yada. You know how it goes. Alright, so the eyes are now done. And for lipstick, I think I'm just going to go with a nude today. And I'm going to use Nathan by uh, Jeffree Star. So I think this is going to be the completed look. I actually think this lipstick looks pretty good with this, even though it's more on the peachy side than I expected when I put it on. But I feel like it goes nicely with the orange that I have in a crease. So let me know if you have this palette and how you feel about this palette, because I am still a little bit conflicted. I feel like the color story is just a little bit weird. It's not like anything else that I've ever seen. I feel like even I have to sit down and like actually think about what I'm going to do when I'm working with this palette. 
Let me know if you want to see me do more with this palette. I still have not done a 3 looks one palette with this, so if you're interested in seeing that, let me know and I will see if I can get around to it. I have so many palettes on their way coming to me right now, and I still have so many of the newer palettes that I haven't done that with, so it might take a while, but if that's something you're interested in, I will put it on my list of 3 looks one palette videos to film, which might not be until like 6 months from now, but... <laughs> I'll try to get around to it if I'm able to. So yeah, let me know what you think of this palette in general if you do have it. I would love to know because I feel like a lot of people don't really use it, which is a shame because I mean, look at my eyes. These shadows perform so beautifully and they're amazing quality as always. So I think that's going to sum up this video. I hope you found it helpful at all. I would say my biggest advice when it comes to kind of breaking down palettes would be to swatch the shimmers and the mattes separately and then first figure out what you can do with the shimmers and then figure out which of the mattes are going to work well with the shimmers in your mind. So just kind of a different way of looking at it. And I also just made a video called which eyeshadow palette is right for you or something along those lines. I will link that up in the corner if you want to check that out. And I kind of went through a lot of the same things that I talked about in this video and this is how I think about a lot of the palettes while I'm using them, when I'm buying palettes, when I'm kind of thinking about what I can do with them and so on. So I hope you found that helpful and if you want to see other videos kind of like this with other palettes, let me know which palettes. I also have a palette collection slash declutter video that I just posted that I will link in the corner for you as well. So yeah, just get back to me with anything that you want to see and I will see what I can do and put it on my list of things to film. So thank you so much for watching this video as always. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.